Hey everybody, uh, happy Thanksgiving. Bob Young coming to you again from Redline Archaeology. Uh, day before Thanksgiving 2021. I hope everyone is planning some great times and memories uh, around their friends and family uh, during this great holiday season. Um, well, I guess we're going to get it kicked off uh, quickly here. This is a new original one owner Redline era Hot Wheels collection from basically 68 to about 70, 71. Uh, three cases of Hot Wheels, original owner. The guy was a true pleasure uh, to deal with. Uh, he wrote me this beautiful uh, note uh, when he sent the collection to me about how easy the, the transaction process was, um, the appraisal, and how happy he was with, uh, with what I paid him for his collection. So everyone's happy, I'm happy, he's happy, and um, these... Uh, Beautiful little treasures are going to a very good home here at Redline Archaeology. So, um, real quick, um, my new book came out in September. It's uh, it's been on being sold on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Walmart.com, and about another uh, dozen dozen and a half retailers um, on the internet and in retail stores. Uh, it's doing extremely well. There is a collector's guide in here, as you can see right here. So collector's guide is a bonus feature of all my secrets on how I've been able to uh, amass these amazing finds and collections over the last 30 year, years. Uh, last count, I was approaching about 30,000 original red lines discovered in like, what I like to call in the wild. Uh, people's attics, basements, storages, uh, closets, uh, you name it. Uh, I've dug them out of uh, just about every part of... Uh, a person's home or storage unit uh, over the years. Uh, again, I don't buy from collectors. I only buy from people who've had these uh, way back in the 60s and early 70s. I've had them as their uh, original childhood collections and you know, getting the story behind it is uh, half the fun as well. Uh, the story on this is that these were in storage for over 50 years. The gentleman recently pulled them out and he was uh, discussing with me all the sights and the smells and how uh, holding each of the individual cars brought back such uh, unique and wonderful memories from back in the 60s and early 70s for him. And, uh, you know, it, it was about a, I'd say a two, three week process. You know, a lot of sellers, they want to uh, spend a little more time with their childhood treasures before they let them go. But he said he wanted to put it in a collector's hands like myself. And uh, so here we are. So let's get started. Uh, I'll just start at the top here. I know there was a little case of something here. I don't know what this is. There must be more cars. These are the extra cars that couldn't fit into the cases. So there's three cases plus almost looks like a banana nut bread casserole dish full of uh, cars. So um, you know what we'll do? Let's get started with these first because I know uh, I think there's some really, really great cars in the two rally cases. So, uh, not that these aren't great, but I think that, uh, you know, we'll save maybe those two cases for last, but I'll, I'll get through these, uh, fairly quickly. And at the end, I'll take a, a whole picture of the entire collection. I'll lay it out here on this, uh, the bar in my basement here, and you'll get a look at everything, but I'll just show you. Here's a nice orange Indy Eagle. Good way to start to start it off. Grand Prix and orange, I think are a little bit tougher. These and purples, uh, tougher to find, obviously, the white interiors, which this isn't. But that's in really, really nice condition for an orange in the Eagle. Orange being one of my favorite colors. Um, that's a good way for me to start, start off here. So, like I always say, you know, usually the surprises go the other way, which is a good way when I get these in hand, because these cameras nowadays on these phones shows such high resolution that they pick up artifact and dust and things that really aren't even there that maybe looks looks like a nick or a defect or something like that. But here's another one, a nice orange TNT bird. Beautiful, beautiful condition. In my other videos, I talk about when I start appraising a collection, especially these original collections, obviously, uh, I always start with the wheels. Wheels tell a lot of story. Um, people that have had these since their childhood really didn't swap the wheels out like we do as collectors. Uh, but the wheels tell a story, as do, do the bases. But this is, uh, you know, West Coast find. Um, and I, I don't see a lot of the toning like I do in the East Coast and the Midwest due to the humidity and extremes of temperature. The, the West Coast, 
collection seem to you know have some nice that's a really nice condition orange tea and tea bird very happy with the first two cars but like i was saying usually i'm pleasantly surprised with the condition of these collections when they do come in here's a really nice lighter blue uh terrera with the white interior as i think that's the best color in this this casting but just a real real pretty lighter shade of blue there real pretty see the wheels see what i mean about the wheels that tells you how much play wear the cars really had beautiful shiny base so starting off good here uh and i know the, the cars and the rumblers and everything in the uh the rally cases are really in spectacular condition from the pictures and i thought these were lesser condition but they're not turning out to be that way here's a really nice blue lotus turbine there see the wheels again See what I mean? You start appraising collections like I do. Start out with the wheels. The wheels tell a big amount of the story as far as play wear is concerned. If the tires like this are usually like new and the base is like that, you're not going to find the nicks on the front end, on the high points, in the back from cars slamming into them. You're just not going to find that. You're going to basically find an unplayed with car, which we have here. So we got four really nice cars in fantastic, fantastic condition. And this gentleman did a great job following directions and wrapping these cars the way he did. Now here's a Olive Chappy, but unfortunately it's missing a wing, which a lot of times they do. But again, the wheels are good. You know, you put a nice uh, wing in there if you have an extra one, which I do. It'll make a really nice display piece. You know, nice color in that. So, so far so good. He's done such a great job wrapping these, and I'm going to have a hard time getting the rest of them out of here. Here is a really, really pretty AMX2 in a lighter, a little bit lighter shade of blue. Really, really pretty. Dark interior. When you have that, like, black interior in these lighter blue shades, I think it really pops. But really, really nice Spectre Flame here. Tail lights, just beautiful. Again, look at the wheels. See what I mean? I, I just have to stress these points because I get these questions all the time from collectors on how to appraise cars and what the values are and everything else. Uh, I am considering doing the price guide down the road one of these days, but uh, we'll see if I do get around to that. But, you know, I've been at this so long, but we've seen the market change so many times that it's, it's hard to value these, but I think I have a pretty good handle on what most of these cars are bringing at any given time. Now here's a really nice uh, lime yellow or lime green we call these. Now this is not antifreeze and I and I try to educate people in the hobby. See the front? You can tell it's a little bit played with because it slammed in the back of something along the way. That flat black paint on this, you know, the, the Vicky, uh, the Woody, you look there for some play wear too. He's got these missing a little bit of chrome here. So this car was run down the track but the paint's spectacular. Really is in great, great condition. You know, could use a little bit of a wheel upgrade, but I leave them alone like this. Um, but when you put this next to a true antifreeze car, antifreeze has a milky look to it. This has a Spectre Flame shiny look to it, so that tells you it's not antifreeze. If you think you have a car that's antifreeze and it's shiny like this, it's not. Milky is antifreeze. And if you put a true antifreeze next to a, a lime yellow like that, you'll see the it's a stark difference. That's the best way to uh, really recognize a true color of a, of, a, of a red line Hot Wheels. Here's a beautiful white interior red Vicky. Again, look at the wheels and the paint. I mean, this is just a spectacular, spectacular piece. Just amazing. Again, just almost like it's pulled right out of the package. That's the kind of condition this is in. Just beautiful. So be sure to subscribe to the station if you haven't already done so. Share it with your friends. I would really appreciate it. Let's keep this hobby fun and interesting. Here's a couple buttons here, Mercedes and a Corvette. And what else we got here? There's three of them. And a 57 T-Bird or 57 Bird Classic. All right, moving right along here. Um, it's been a couple months since I've hit a collection. I mean, I've had a lot of negotiations over the last couple months. 
I do have four, I have four pretty amazing questions coming in, this being one of them, but I have one from a former employee uh, coming in from the West Coast and one, uh, another one, which is basically almost a full case of Hot Wheels that were in a grand, grandmother's attic. And here's a green Repco, Robin Repco, Formula One. Again, the wheels start there. Just a really, really nice example. Very common car in a common color, but what's uncommon about it is the condition. Just beautiful. But uh, like I was saying, I've got a few more collections coming in over the next five to seven days, so stay tuned. Uh, it's got some mind-blowing stuff I'm gonna show you. Uh, here's a really nice blue Continental. It's got some issues. It's got some uh, little bit of, uh, I call it peppering on the front, on the roof, I mean the hood. Uh, the rest of it's pretty good though. Really nice, beautiful display piece. Really gorgeous. And these have come up recently too, in the last year. Seems to be more of a following for these Continentals there. For a while they were dogs without fleas, but they're uh, making a little bit of a comeback, I'll tell you. When I get them in, I, I don't have them in for long, people. People buy them right up and they pay a, a nice penny for them if they're, if they're in good condition. So it's good to see that. I, thought, I always thought that was a good, good car. Okay, so here's the antifreeze. So we got an antifreeze hot heap I was just talking about. I don't know if you can see the milkiness to that. See that? And then here's the spectra flame, the lime yellow. See the difference? One's milky and one's shinier, like a lighter shade. And there's the difference right there. Okay? So milky look to antifreeze, spectra flame shine to the lime yellow. People confuse it all the time. But now you know. Now you know how to tell the two apart. You just happen to have the same casting in, in the two colors to show you. I was just talking about them. That's funny. Forgot all about that. I appraise so many cars and collections every week that you know they start blending together at times. Kind of forget. Called a guy the wrong name the other day because he had the same area code as another guy was buying a collection off of. Mercedes 280 uh, SL. A little... But nice displayer, nice wheels, but obviously run through the, looks like the uh, rod runner a few times. Get that front, that front high point wear right on the hood. That's the, that's a rod runner hitting it. So, here we go. Rod runner, boy, I remember tightening up those, those rubber bands on that thing so tight that would almost fly the car off the track when it ran through and whipped it so fast. Here's a common twin mill. Very cool car. Iconic. Red twin mill. It's beautiful. You know, one to one scales have been made of that car. And go on tour. Uh, the other ones, like the Diora. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Got a Fire Chief Cruiser in really spectacular condition. Just beautiful, beautiful tampos. You got the clear blue. White on top. There are some variations to that. Again, the wheels, everything is just like right out of the package. All right, a few more to go here. And then we'll get on to, uh, looks like the cases. Here's a really nice orange AMX, just beautiful. I get more hot pink AMXs, custom AMXs than anything. And then I probably have to say Orange is probably the second most common color I get in these, but you usually don't see them in this kind of condition. But that is really pretty, and that is a beautiful, beautiful orange. I think I know where that's gonna go. Being one of my favorite colors, and in that condition. I'm all about condition, folks. This is copper, another Grand Prix. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful condition. Really, really nice color in that casting. All right, so that completes the four, four of the Grand Prix there. And then we got the Chaparral, all right? And there's a really nice, now this is a red. It's got some slight toning to a white interior, virtually unplayed with, beautiful base. What I should tell people is if you have any questions about a, a spoiler's color, you always look in the hood bay. For some reason, I mean the engine bay, uh, on, you know, there's no hood, but you always look there for the true color of these spoilers. 
The reason I tell you that is because it seems like the rest of the car will tone, maybe a shade or two. But that always is either lighter sprayed or it doesn't tone as much. There you can see it's it's red in color, whereas the rest of the car almost looks like a burnt, burnt red. But that's the true color. I had an orange, black roof, white interior, King Cuda on the card, which is like the holy grail for that casting one time. And it was uh, evenly toned. But I looked in around the engine, and you could see it was bright orange. So one time the whole car was that color, but it had toned out a shade or two. But boy, did people go nuts over that car. That was, uh, that was some time back in the day. I think I wrote about it in my, uh, in my first book. I talked about that, that collection. That came out of Northern California, that collection. All right, let's get to it here. Got three total cases to go through. I'm going to have a mess on my hands with all this trash, but oh well. It's a good problem to have, right, in the hobby? I'm finding these collections. Okay, so, missing the cardboard placard here. The mag wheel, right? It's got this one intact. A little bit warpy. And this is the one that's normally missing, is this one. Shows the cars, right? The original 16. So, um... Two out of three ain't bad, but this is probably the least worrisome if you're going to, you know, ever sell a case or a collector wants a case. That's what you want is that placard. That's the one that's everybody wants. Now, this is the one I think's got the rumblers in it. And, uh, yeah, at least a half a dozen of them. Here's one here, and he's got the roll bar. Now, don't ask me the names of these. I, I know them occasionally, <laughs> but there's a nice one. I know these have really come up, you know, in value uh, recently. So um, I've got a whole collection of them upstairs from over the years. But there she is, just a beauty. So I'll, I'll put these. I don't know. You know, sometimes these little things that they gave you back in the day to hold the track, you know, they 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 didn't do such a great job back then. Uh, I had a hard time as a child keeping those things on the track, but they're still very cool. Here's another one with the roll bar. Uh, I'm just going to leave these next to them for now so I can get through this collection. There it is. Nice, nice aqua colored rider. Dark blue uh, cycle. Very, very cool. These are very, very cool pieces. All right, you stay up there. He's not going to stay, but that's okay. All right. Here's another one. Nice thing is it all has the roll bars. I think that's called the high tailor, right? A rider with number five on its back, if that means anything to anybody. Okay. Let's see what this one is. I think there were six from what I remember. There's a nice two color combo on that one and it's got the roll bar oh one's called this three squealer there's all different names for these things high tailor uh, i can't keep them straight but i do hit them in collections occasionally though and this question here's a ferrari sizzler which is very cool i don't see these very often i think this was from like 75 somewhere around there very cool sizzlers were just so much fun back in the day when I get Sizzlers in collections, I, I just keep them. I just like them that much. I just think they're so cool. I don't restore them or anything. But here's the live wire. I had that as a kid, and I had that in red. This looks orange. Very cool. Chrome's always gone on these things. You see the chrome on the tail? But the battery acid takes care of the rest of it. Very, very cool. Actually, consider him a friend, Derek Gable. He, uh, he's the individual who invented Sizzlers. And uh, I had the distinct honor and privilege of meeting him on a couple occasions. And, uh, you know, some my copies of my book, Here's the Mustang. Um, gold, beautiful, beautiful condition. This guy was a really good steward of this collection, I got to tell you. But Der Derek is a real gentleman. He's very knowledgeable. He created over 50 different toys that went to market for Mattel, from what I understand. And responsible for the Sky Show set, uh, the Sizzlers, uh, some other things with the Hot Wheels. So, 
there's another. I know these, these names of these things are all over the place on these. I don't see it on this one. But my eyes are not the best anymore. Oh, well, whatever it is. It's like a Hemi Cuda, something. Really cool. Don't see that one very often. You know, just the Angelino with the Ford Mark IV. Ford Mark IV in gold or yellow. Very nice piece. Very nice sizzlers. Very excited about these. Really, really like them. Really, really like these cars. I think they're so, so cool. And boy, did we have fun ripping these things around the fat track back in the day. We didn't, we didn't run them a lot on the orange track with the Essie's brake and all that. We we loved the high banks to the fat track. And me and my friends would run them all the time. And here's, I guess this is uh, AFX, yeah, AFX car. So there's a few of them in here, slot cars. I think there's three all together. Here's another one. That's a very cool one, like a Challenger. Another, I think this is AFX. It says me, I'm made in Singapore, that's AFX. I do know a little bit about these cars, a little bit. Very cool. Don't wanna waste my time on that because we're only here for the red lines, right? This feels like another rumbler, it is. Okay. I don't know what this one is. Sorry to be wasting your time looking for a three squealer. Three squealer. There you go. Very cool. Black top hat. Black handlebars. Black gas tank. A little bit two tone going on there. Very, very nice piece. If you're a Rumblers collector, I got to tell you, these, these pieces here are really, really nice. So what's that? Five right there. So this is the sixth one. My memory serves you right. Yeah, another high tailor, green, tan rider, five white helmet. All that stuff means a lot to rumblers collectors. Me, not so much. I just look at condition and quality. Rarity is fun too. Don't get me wrong. Love finding the old sport four twos and the customs. And oh, I was wrong. Still another rumbler. I don't know what this one's called, but. There's another one with the big, looks like a sugar bear uh, rake on the front. Uh, chopper. Very, very cool. And here is the other uh, slot car. Now this is a little bit smaller, so I don't know who makes this one. It doesn't have a stamp on it or anything. I don't know. It looks like a little Jaguar. Very cool though. Slot car guys know what they are. So many different makers of slot cars. It wasn't just Aurora and AFX. It was... You know, lots of different makers. There's another Sizzler. So, all right. So there we go. Through one case. All right, let's get to the next one. Snaps never snap. Okay. Let's see. All right, we'll break it up here a little bit. We'll go to the 24 car case. And again, this gentleman really did a fantastic job wrapping this. Each car in tissue paper, like I asked them. And then, uh, you know, bubble wrap around the cases and then stuff in the case so they don't get tossed around too much because these boxes are typically just thrown. Okay. Tab is still there. This is a really nice shape, this case. Wow. Really impressed with that. All right, all the dividers are in there. Let's see what we got. Oh, beautiful Camaro, white interior, black roof. Fantastic. It's the first car I got as a kid. It's a black roof Camaro. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful custom. I mean, from, from having that for all these years, I mean, look at the condition of that. That is just beautiful. I love it when I find these 68s in that type of condition. It's got a little bit of wear, but you know, it's probably the first car that this gentleman had as a child, so of course he's gonna run it down the track. Oh, the Sizzler's got to the purple fleet side. You see that corrosion? That's from the battery acid. Probably sat right next to one of these Sizzlers in the case for, for many, many years. And that's what happens. 
All right, beautiful. I've hit like three or four of these recently in this similar condition. Beautiful Maserati Mistral. Just gorgeous, gorgeous condition. So, beautiful base. Beautiful all around. I just, best color combination in this casting, I think. Beautiful. I got a couple of them up in my case right now. Or that one would be going directly into it. Ah, nice Ferrari, 312P. I know my buddy Kevin, big Ferrari, 312P collector. I'm sure he's going to want this one. Right, Kev? If he's watching, he's probably laughing right now. So, uh, nice blue 312P. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh, button almost got away from me. It's one thing I do after I uh, open up all these cars and collections. I go through everything. I go through the tissue paper in the box. I got to tell you, more times than not, I find things that people have wrapped separately or fell out of one of the boxes or whatever, got away with it. So here's a green Ford J car. Beautiful condition, a little bit of high point wear. It probably went through the rod runner a couple times right on the top there. Other than that, really pretty, really nice. Nice 68, another one. Oh, more buttons, more buttons, more buttons. If you need buttons, I got literally thousands of them. Anybody looking for buttons? There's a T-Bird, Aqua, very common, most common color in this. Beat up though, obviously. This is when he played with it. Okay, let's see what we got here. Here's a really nice cougar. Green, tan interior. Got some dust in on it, but man, that cleans up nice. Wow. Really, really nice green. Really beautiful green cougar. Shiny paint. No toning. Beautiful tail lights. There you go. Just a beautiful, beautiful example of a 68. One of the original 16. All right, let's get these buttons going. There's the cougar button. Let's see, we got here, we've got the T-Bird and creamy pink button. And what else we got here? And turbo fire. All right. I know there's a lot of heavyweights in that other uh, uh, case there. It's some beautiful, they don't even look like they were ever touched with. But here's a, here's a chaparral wing missing a post, but you know, really, really nice condition, white enamel but one of the posts broke off. The, these wings were so flimsy in the day. It's one or any of them survived that were played with, but very cool piece. I had a red chaparral as a kid. One of my favorite pieces I played with all the time. There's a red turbo fire, a little darkening to the back hatch, but really nice condition overall. Nice piece. All right, let's see what we got here. This feels like a Grand Prix to me. Yeah, McLaren, M6A, brown, nice piece. A little bit of wear, not much. There's really not a lot of play wear on any of these cars except for that, uh, really the T-Bird and the Fleet Side were the two worst, but the Fleet Side took a beating from the Sizzlers. So, who knows, that could have been spectacular if it wasn't for that battery acid getting on there all right there's a lola beat up just when i say there's not many beat up cars one shows up missing half the paint on the roof that's okay <laughs> if it's got to be a car that's that's the one you want it to be beat up and not the olds or the camaro or the mustang or any of them here's a nice antifreeze mclaren unfortunately the back hatch which was probably painted at a different time or a different part of the factory as toned but that would have been a spectacular piece. Really no play wear much at all, but something got to that back hatch and made a tone. But that happens, folks. Look, if all these cars were spectacular, I would have paid, you know, double what I paid, you know, if they didn't have some issues. Now here's a nice purple Manus, but it's got a little bit, a little, little chip up here. Other than that, that's a pretty decent, beautiful display piece if you got like a Carney case, nice white interior. 
That's a tough combo on the Manus. Real tough combo. I've got an orange one like that. Almost like a salmon-y color. Um, that's, that's in my personal collection. That's just spectacular. Boy, what a nice color combination that is. Rare. I, I've never seen another one like it. But uh, a couple more buttons for Jay and that custom Firebird. And this feels like this feels like a light my Firebird. Yeah, blue, really good condition. Very common color. But like I always say, what's uncommon about it is its condition. It's just spectacular. Just beautiful, beautiful car. So. This collection is pretty sizable. It's probably going to be about 80 cars. There's a really nice magenta twin mill. Really pretty. I think that's a great, great color you don't see so often in that casting. Just beautiful. Beautiful. Love that color in that casting. Okay. Here is a purple with purple interior Barracuda. Again, really nice condition. You got a little salting on the roof. Beautiful paint, beautiful wheels, really nice base for a 68. Tail lights, a little played with, a little beat up. The car slam in the back. A eh, little bit of wear on the front, not much. It's just the roof. That's really about it. And you're missing a hood pin here, too. But, again, another nice display piece. Okay. There's a, looks like a rose demon to me, a little bit darker, or that could be even red. Looks more rosy to me in person here. Really nice condition, though. One of the cooler castings that Mattel put out, I think. Very aggressive looking car. All right, let's see what we got here. That's a nice red Mustang. Nice condition. A little bit, a little bit on the roof. Not much though. Yeah, back looks good. Tail lights. Really nice condition Mustang. Really pretty. Show you the base. Really nice base as well. So we got some good customs. Uh, we got some good Grand Prix, good sixty eights, sixty nines. Sizzlers, Rumblers. I mean, we got a little bit of everything in this collection. There's the Mustang button. Let's see what we got here. Ah, nice heavy Chevy. I think there were two of them in here. So, there you go. A little bit evenly toned out red. Heavy Chevy. Really not played with, though. But just darkened up from storage. See around the, on the, around the engine, like I say. A little bit lighter shade. You can tell the original color. Nice condition, though. I think there's two of them. I think there were two heavy Chevys in this very similar color like that. I guess he must have liked that casting. Now there's a Hong Kong 4J. A little bit of wear right on the top again, like the other one had, the green one. But again, pretty much, you know, unplayed with condition. Really nice. Got a really, really, really nice collection here across the board so far and I think the best is yet to come too now here's an orange one look around the engine bay you'll see the orange right and then you'll see the even toning and the rest of the paint it's a it's an it's almost like a phenomenon that occurs in these spoilers but you know that's how I taught myself over the years to come up with the true color so these cars because a lot of times collectors will argue with you about the color of something and you know everyone's got an opinion and Everyone's entitled, including myself, right? We all can learn from each other in this hobby at all times. Oh, there's a beautiful red cord. Stunning. Stunning. Beautiful, beautiful car. Every which way. Beautiful cord. Look at the base on this. Wow. Wow. As my friend Todd says, you can shave in it. You can shave in that base. It's, it's like a mirror. There you go. I'm running out of space here. 
I'm going to have to make some more room before I open up that last case because that's where all the heavyweights are. Here's a really nice, nice ice blue, light blue, Windex blue, white interior. Gorgeous, gorgeous Eldorado. Everything about this is just beautiful. I'll tell you, I've hit some really nice Eldos in the last year or two. In very similar condition. That is, well, I'll tell you, those last two cars for me are probably the highlight of this collection so far, but there's some great pieces in here. Really nice. And here's another one. Wow. Missing one sticker, but a beautiful, beautiful bifocal. I mean, not much wrong with this one, if anything. Just beautiful. And not a crumbler base. That's one question you always have to ask of these. These and the iced teas. You gotta be careful with them too. Sometimes you'll have a crumbler base and the iced teas, but the bifocals are famous for it. Okay, so that's it for that case. That case is really in nice shape too. You don't see the cracks or anything in this thing. Wow. <clears throat> that's a case I don't see very often. Is that yellow uh, 24 flat case. I, I get more of the stack cases and the rally cases than anything. That's the biggies. I don't know if it's put anything else in here. I hear some dividers and stuff. Uh, I'll tell you, over the years, some of the best things I've ever gotten in collections have come in little baggies, little plastic bags like that. That Tucson collection I got back in, uh, it must have been 2017, right around there. I wrote about my first book. Guy hands me a little baggie. He goes, hey, this was with all the stuff that I bought at the yard sale, do you want it? I, I looked at it, it was just a bunch of, you know, like Grand Prix stickers or whatever it was, uh, the spoiler stickers and, and parts of the cars. I took it home, there were 21 Olds 442 sticker sheets in there, 21, and only one had a small tear in it. That was it, 21. And you know the value of those things? It was crazy. He just threw them at me in the bag, so I sent him more money when I got home. <laughs> I had to. I mean, that was, he didn't even know it. I didn't know it. I didn't, it, it wasn't part of it. So here's his case. There's the mag wheel that was missing on the other one, the placard there, but he's missing the back Hot Wheels uh, uh, piece of cardboard there. So we'll see. But all three snaps are in place, and almost like new. This is a really nice condition case. Um, and there, and he's got that, which is most important for collectors, in my opinion. Okay. So let's get right to it here. Oh, there's, oh isn't that nice? Tune-up tower, original tool, as you can tell with the Mattel stamp. So that's a nice little pickup there. Got some sticker sheets. There you go. You guys, full chaparral sticker sheet. And looks like the spoiler ones, right? With the eyeballs. Put them over here. Keep the sticker sheets together. Uh, the tune-up tower tool will go with that. All right. So, moving along here. We're at 38 minutes. I think I'm doing pretty good here, folks. I, I knew this was going to be a long video. There is a beautiful, beautiful orange-white interior. Vicky. Again, that's my favorite color combination. It's an orange with white. You don't see it. You don't see the whole bunch. I wouldn't say this is a rare car, but it's a for me, it's more desirable because of the color combo and the condition, obviously. Just beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful condition. I'll put it right next to his sister, who's red and white interior. Okay. Oh, another button shoved in there as well. That's a Dior button. There's a Dior in there. I think it's missing. I think it's missing a, what you call it, surfboard. Beautiful waste wagon. I'll tell you, the, the uh, heavyweights in this collection were just, every single one of them are just like this. I mean, you're not going to find them better than this, folks. You're just not. I mean, these are just unplayed with. And this case, I think at least half of it has heavyweights. Look at this nice light green scooper. You just don't get them like this. I'm sorry. Kids played with these, man. They had moving parts. The moving parts were broken off. Look at that base on that. I mean, it's like right off the factory line. That's insane. Beautiful, beautiful piece. Really, really nice. And I think he's got the, f I don't think he's got the team trailer or the racer rig, which are two of the tougher pieces, I think, as far as heavyweights are concerned. Beautiful purple. 
Another one of my favorite colors. Doesn't have the white interior, but still it's Hong Kong, dark interior, beautiful. Again, just unplayed with. Unplayed with. That's how you'd like to find them. If you're fortunate enough. And here's another one. Okay, the snorkel. This is another Hong Konger. Green. I can't find anything wrong with it. It's just beautiful. I know these are common colors in these, but like I always say, oh, needs a cap. I got plenty of them upstairs. Um, like I say, what's uncommon is the condition. That's what makes them uncommon. And to me, that's that's where the value lies, is in the condition. Oh, here's a beautiful orange Dior. Wow. It's missing one surfboard, though. That's okay. Really, really nice condition, though. Wow. That one might have to go right in my case. Got to find another surfboard for it. I'm sure I got plenty of them. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful piece. You just don't find these 68s like this, I'm telling you. Crazy. Crazy to find any of these cars in, in this type of condition, let alone these 68s. There's a beautiful beach bomb. Hong Kong, white interior. Beautiful. All around, surfboards. Not even played with. Absolutely insane. You gotta love it. Love this hobby, man. It's so much fun getting these collections. Here is, uh, looks like a yellow power pad to me. Really pretty. You don't see them in yellow very often. I've only picked up one blue one uh, over the years, and I finally broke down and sold that to my good collector friend, Joe. Joe's got that one in his collection, and that is just, I might never find another one of them in these collections again. Now, this, people will say it's red, but that's really rosy to me. And that's in just spectacular, shiny Spectra Flame condition. Gorgeous. Look at that car. I love that casting. <clears throat> that, the Demon, the Short Order. I think they're cool, man. Just cool, cool castings. All right. Moving along. Wow. Stunningly beautiful Cockney cab. Stunning. I mean, it almost gives you the effect of being over chrome. Some of these cars are so well kept and so like new. Look at the sticker. Look at the base. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. So nice. So nice. I'm glad I can share this uh, hobby with a lot of you because, you know, back in the day, I could only share it with the local guys. The East Coast Redliners group, the, that group, and uh, a few of my collector friends uh, that, that we you know, enjoy these finds with, you know, but that was it. Now I can enjoy them with the whole world through YouTube and Facebook. And I get so much positive feedback and I really appreciate it from everybody. But there's a really nice example of the peeping bomb. All right, let's see. So for me, it's exciting. I just, I just love finding this stuff. That's the biggest thrill for me. This is missing the stickers except for the one on the side. But man, when you talk about condition, forget it. Maybe just didn't want to put all the stickers on. But just beautiful, beautiful crew car. There she is. Beautiful. I remember seeing these, these heavyweights thinking, wow, for me, that's where the, a lot of the value lies. And there's a, a stickerless mongoose. And I know it's not a, it's, it's definitely not a, a 73. Nope. But nevertheless, it's a mongoose without the stickers. I think I actually have a set of stickers upstairs. I wouldn't put them on that one. That's got a little bit of high edge wear on the front there and some marks on it. I don't know if they would come off. It looks like almost like marker or something. But still, it's good filler for somebody. That'll come cheap, I'm sure. There's. There you go. There's a nice lime, evenly toned out Nomad. It's funny how some of these cars got hit with mild toning and, and most of them didn't. But I'll tell you, if you if it's going to tone, that's the way you want it toned. The hood, the matching hood and everything. So, 
That's the way you want it with the runner tone instead of the hatch being dark and the front being beautiful. That's a little frustrating. There's a beautiful aqua white interior ambulance in really nice condition. Translucent light on top. Okay, we got a couple cars here. Got Eaton Bandit. Antifreeze missing an engine, which I'm sure I can pop one in. That's in really nice shape, though. Wow. That is a pretty, pretty car. Just need the engine to go with it. I'm sure I got one lying around somewhere. There's a nice gold split image. This is one of the few ones I had Tony up in front through the pictures that they sent me. But really nice piece, nonetheless. Okay, we're getting there. Only about eight, ten more cars left. Let's see. We got here. We're still under an hour. Jackrabbit Special. Really nice car. No disrespect, but I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that one. I got like 50 of them that I can barely give away. But I think they're cool cars. <laughs> you know, and they are part of the coolest line of toy cars ever made. So it makes that one cool too. All right, so what I need now are the cabs for this, and I think I found them. Let's see, I need a red one for the fire engine, which I got here. Beautiful piece, white interior. Has the ladder. Sometimes that ladder is missing. And let's see, and then we got the aqua cab for the moving van. Darker interior, Hong Kong with the blue glass. All right. So, coming down the home stretch, folks. Hang in there. Beautiful school bus. It's got the orange blower. More times than not, that's there than missing, thankfully. I think it's because the way it was uh, made and put in there, it snaps in, and, and the size of this car probably wasn't run down the track as much as the other ones. So, didn't get played with as much, I'd say. School buses back in the day, man, they were... That was a big time car to find, and and the, in the package they did big money. But they've uh, they really dropped off over the years. Maybe they've come back. I don't know. But I've got a fair amount of them. There's a green dump truck, just spectacular condition, Hong Kong. Beautiful, beautiful. I'm so happy with this collection. I'm so pleasantly surprised at the condition of everything. I'm telling you, like I said, these cameras nowadays, man, they pick up things that aren't even there. And there's a beautiful blue silhouette from 68. Let's see what we got here. A light ice blue, Windex blue, light blue, whatever terms you use. Windex blue has kind of gone away. Back in the day, us collectors used to use Windex blue all the time to describe uh, certain shades of light blue. But that's that's your light blue. Beautiful split image in light blue. Great color combo with the white interior. US on that car. Paddy Wagon, another iconic car. Very recognizable to people that had these cars back in the day. I get a lot of them, they're in every collection, just like those sand, cra I mean, the Jack Rabbits are. The Red Barons as well, and here's one. And the thing about the Red Baron, boy, if you can find them with a shiny helmet like that, hold on to them. Because that's one in 50 that I find in these collections that still have a shiny helmet and with the stickers in place. Because you know the story with that. But boy, that is just a beautiful, beautiful piece. And again, one of my favorite castings from back in the day. Very common. I remember as a kid, we couldn't find it anywhere in the stores. And I saw it in all the advertisement. I kind of drove my parents nut at some, nutty at, at some level with that car and the beach bomb. Couldn't find them. Uh, the beach bomb, I had to drink like three or four quarts of the pineapple juice, which I despised as a kid, so I could get the labels off of it to send it in with a buck or two for the giveaway. And I got a purple beach bomb in the mail from that, <laughs> but we couldn't find them in the stores. There's a nice lighter shade of a grasshopper, blue. Not that deep blue, just it's not, it's not light blue by any stretch, but just that nice, beautiful light shade. There you go. All right, so that's it, folks. Um, let me... Uh, Give you an overview here so everyone can see all the cars. You know, private message me if you have any questions. Um, 
about any of the cars uh, in the collection or any other cars I have that you've seen. There's more collections coming. Um, probably in total, let me think about this, probably another 200, 150 to 200 cars are coming over the next week in collections. So um, that's, that's really all I have to say about that. But here, here you go. Here's the three cases of cars. I hope I can do some justice here, showing you everything. There's the slot cars on the end there. And you can see the beach bomb, the power pad, the beautiful cord, and the El Dorado. Let me give you a close-up of that. The bifocal, the Diora. All the beautiful heavyweights back there. The Vickies, TNT birds, a little bit of everything in this collection. The beautiful and oh so fun Sizzlers. All, all these beautiful rumblers that people just love, including myself. And here's the heavyweights again. Great collection of heavyweights. And here's some more cars. So, really, really nice collection. Very, very happy with it. I hope, uh, I hope everyone got to see everything they wanted to see. And uh, thanks for tuning in. Please be sure to like the video. Um, subscribe to the channel. Hit notifications so not to miss any future upcoming. You're not going to want to miss two of the next three collections coming in. Trust me. You're not going to want to miss those unveils. And I'm even thinking of uh, having my good friend Carmine Francis Ford Cantwell Jr. doing a professional video like he's done for me in the past. And uh, I think the two other collections coming in are very well deserving of it. Um, one is uh, basically a, a case of original Hot Wheels. Uh, uh, and the other one is uh, with the Mattel employee uh, that worked in the first two, three years uh, of production of Hot Wheels. And just some killer, killer cars that there's one in there that's never been seen in the hobby. And I got a few of my collector friends scratching their head about it right now. So happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Thanks for tuning in and uh, stay tuned to the Redline Archaeology YouTube channel for some uh, amazing discoveries that are just around the corner. And I'm telling you the truth. Happy hunting. I hope you all get a, a wonderful find like this one day in the wild. And uh, this is Bob Young uh, signing out. Take care, everybody.